Why should you do public speaking at all? Do ev does everybody recognize this brand? <laughs> There's always one jackass in the audience. Anyway, that's Nike. And why do you know that? Because you haven't been living under a rock for the past 30 years. I would just like to let you know that the Kiev audience was even better than you. <laughs> anyway, so you might associate their brand with Michael Jordan or LeBron James or some other great athlete or other person who does good things. Which leads me to my first point. This is your brand. Your brand is what people associate with you and your name. And you want those things to be good. And one way to do that is to do public speaking about things that you know. Point number two, public speaking makes you better at regular speaking. It might be useful in things like life. It boosts your confidence. Look how confident she, confident she is. It makes you look important. Then people have to listen to you. Important. Listen to me, Dagnabbit. Anyway. So, now that I've convinced you that you should do public speaking, why Ignite? So, think big, start small. It's not only clip art that I stole from the internet. You're gambling. You don't know if you're going to be good at this yet. You might go broke. You might hit the jackpot. We don't know. And because of that, we go for the nickel slots, not the $10,000 a hand blackjack table. It's only five minutes. So if I'm horrible, <laughs> it doesn't last that long. <laughs> also, when you're less experienced, you need to have more improvement cycles. So when you do a 20-minute talk, it takes a long time to rehearse that. And you have to do so many more of those. It's very hard. This one, you can get 12 of these in an hour. Dead serious, but don't do that. Also, now that you've done that, and you have, like, uh, you have the Ignite, you have a movie trailer for your big talk, which you can submit with your big talk to the next conference, which is pretty awesome. It lets people know how you deliver on this specific topic. Very useful. So, now that I've told you that A, you should do public speaking, and B, that Ignites are the right way to go, how to go about Ignites. Does everybody recognize this man? Do you recognize this man? Yes, give me, like, wake the fuck up. <laughs> so that is Jerry Stiller, or otherwise known as uh, George Costanza's father in Seinfeld. Now, he came up with this amazing holiday called Festivus, which has a custom called the airing of grievances, where you wait for your entire family to get all hungry and sit down at the table, and right when they're ready to eat, you tell them how much they've disappointed you in the past year. <laughs> In other, in other words, complain. So you may say, oh, come on, who is going to let you go on stage and complain? Oh, dear people. <laughs> here is me in London complaining about pager duty. Here is me complaining about conferences right here. Here is me complaining about Docker and Hertelia. I'm complaining to you right now. <laughs> then you make slides. If you recognize this, that's sign number two, that you are old. <laughs> sign number three, that you're old, you recognize who these guys are. These players were notorious for never practicing anything. They also don't have championship rings. Might be related. Then you do Kaizen. But we don't have time to talk about that. It's only five minutes. So make slides, practice and improve, profit. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to put on my organizer's hat for a second. What, you don't believe on all, all organizers wear this? Look. <laughs> so um, as an organizer, I can tell you that it's much easier for us to take a gamble on Ignites. Meaning if you're a first time speaker and you want to get into doing this, it's much easier, easier for us to let you try out things at Ignites. And I'm looking at you, the younger people in the crowd. So do more Ignites, and if you need any guidance, talk to me, and thank you very much.